Hey folks, Mal the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with another Burma build video for you. And in this video, we're completing our Japanese defenses. Now, in the last three videos, we've covered the basic log barriers, we've done hidden bunkers, and then we worked with the hard foam zitteries sort of trench system to make my bigger modular feature trenches. And now we're stepping up with this piece. Now, this was sent to me along with the trenches and I never asked for this. They just sent it to me. Now, as you can see, yeah, there's a couple of questions about it. And I've showed this on a video before and you know, what should I do with it, that sort of stuff. And people were sort of saying, well, line it in with the other trench systems. And I could, but I'd have to sort of cut it off. I'd have to make it modular. Yeah, and also my, my trenches don't really work like that. My trenches are designed to be like circular defenses or at least one part of a circular defense because that's what the Japanese did in the jungle. They didn't have long trench lines. They had like bases with circular trench lines around it. And there's a lot of indications of this sort of circular style, this all round defense. And if I can find a very quick picture out of here, there's a really good one that sort of sums it up. Here you go. Such as that. That's an artillery emplacement, but it's designed to be able to shoot round, or maybe an AT, yeah? But it's been designed with all round defense in depth, yeah? And this idea of all round, it kind of works for me. So if I look at this and I go, well, okay, if I'm not gonna use it in the trench systems, what am I gonna do with it? Well, straight away, you can see it's got a direction that way. You know, that's why it feels like, yeah, and it's even got the communication trench. But I don't want to do that with that. Yeah, so if we get rid of these trenches, what can we do with them? Well, much like with our hidden bunkers, yeah, we can have bunkers to it. So if we had a bunker there, a bunker there, and a bunker there, all of a sudden we haven't got communication trenches. What we've got is all round defense of an artillery position. Now, the next thing that we've got to do with it, and this is going to get a bit funky to be truthful, is this little gun placement here. It's not actually big enough to, to sort of fit my needs, yeah? I can't actually get what I want in there. And the only way I really can is if I change this and I carve into this, carve it out like that to make this a larger area that I can drop a decent sized artillery placement in and also present it all round. Now this means I'm gonna to have to redo the, the sandbags in some and do something, some stuff like that. But this is a feature build. We're here to make it more interesting, aren't we? So I'm look, kind of looking forward to it. But the first thing that we need to do with this is sort of raise it up, yeah? Uh, when you look at defences and defence in depth, each sort of layer of defences is often a bit higher than the next one. So they're elevated and they can shoot over each other. Now I've got my trench lines, yeah? And they're at a certain height. These, this is manufactured to be the same height. So if I put this behind the trench lines, you know, basically the troops on the trench line, it's gonna block line of sight. So I need to raise this up. And to do that, Bolly, yeah, I've got a sheet of styrofoam. And if you see, I've already sort of cut out on it. Now, the idea is what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this out. We're gonna give it a bit of a bevel. Yeah, and then I'm gonna mount it. And I'm gonna mount it on three mil MDF. Yeah, my standard stuff that I've used for this set. But what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to do two sheets and sort of fix them together. It's a bit ad hoc, but it's only to give it a bit of sturdiness. I mean, this is only to give it a decent base. This is pretty sturdy. I'm not worried about warping yet, so we should be fine. So with that in mind, my first job is I need to get a blade. And I just basically need to come along and start cutting this out. So I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to bring it back to you. Once I've got my wood cut, it's beveled and we're ready to put it all together. See you shortly. So I've done my cutting. Yeah, I've got my two halves. They've gone together nicely. I've got my foam to go on top of it. Yeah, that's gonna go about there. And then this is gonna go on top of it like that, giving us a slightly raised elevation. Just, ten, pardon me, just 10 mil, but it's enough. It's easily enough, yeah, for us to sort of say, yeah, this is a feature piece. Now, the next thing we need to do is obviously stick it all down, which means adventures in PVA. And yeah, I'm doing spots because I don't want this to warp or anything like that. And PVA is air drying. So allowing air to get round the blobs of PVA is the quickest way of getting it to dry. So with those done, yeah, flip it over. 
Right, give that a bit of a wiggle. Yeah, that's all on and it's sitting nicely. Yeah, that's going to go there next. So I need to bring these two pieces together. And what we're going to do is flip that over, spot it again. Yeah, around the edges. Come on. Oh, really got to get out. Come on, get down. Yeah, so very quickly all around, lots of spots. There we are. Yeah. Ooh. My other one's fallen off. I can feel it loose. Flip that round. And then very quickly, I want to drop this down because I don't want to smear the PVA everywhere. So drop that on there. Bring those together. Push that onto there so that's in the right place. Wiggle it all around. That's what I like about PVA. Yeah, you've got a little bit of play time unlike contact adhesives and stuff like that now the last thing i need to do is just get some weight yeah so throw that on there yeah and i'll get a couple more tubs in a sec yeah one well, i'll throw those on there yeah just to hold it down but basically that's it that's where we are right now yeah i need to hold that together because it's all going to fall apart right sensible thing is to stop messing with it get some weights on it and let it dry that's the sensible thing, so that's what I'm going to do, for once. I'll see you when it's dry, folks. So our feature piece is all base now. It's on the foam and it's on the wood. Flip it over, you see the joint nice and clean there. Yeah, but lovely sturdy base, and it feels more like a feature piece. Obviously, it's increased the surface area, you can see that, but I don't mind that, it kind of works. Yeah, and it's that'll be placeable for models, and then I can build up my clump from this edge, if you know what I mean. Yeah, now obviously, we've got to get into the actual converting of it. And so, as I said, here's my idea, an all-round piece, which means turning this into a bunker, this into a bunker, and this into a bunker. Now, I've done these before, yeah, we did them with the log bunkers, yeah, we did them as part of the trench works, and we've done them as part of the actual individual hidden log bunkers. Yeah, so the mechanism of how I'm going to put them together using these sort of things, we know how we're doing that. A couple of things that are different, though. Now, in the previous ones, we either just made the little slits, or in the case of the trench works, we, we made the trench pointing literally straight out at the end. If I do that, we're going to have one, one sort of fire pit there, one pointing that way, one pointing that way. Doesn't really work. So what I want to do is I want to angle this one sort of this way, angle that one that way, and angle that one that way. And what that means is I'm going to have to build it up and shape it a bit differently, but we can do that. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is this sort of pile of sandbags. Yeah, it's a bit excessive. It's fine for the western front, stuff like that, where they were heavily used. But in Burma, they tended to pile just, they didn't put earth in sandbags, they just piled earth over it. Although they did use sandbags and corrugated iron and that sort of stuff. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to skim this down, maybe put some logs in here and sort of like tie it into the other features. OK, because there's no logs on here yet. So with the bunkers and with that, that should look all right. Now, this moves us to this point, which is quite a small fire pit. And for something as feature as this, I want it larger. So if I give you an example, this is my it's not finished painting yet. Yeah, but this is my artillery piece for my chindits, my howitzer. And it won't even fit on there. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to extend it. Yeah, and for extending it, what I'm thinking is basically cut into the foam all the way around here and bring it to about here and make the fire pit much larger. OK, so that's going to be one of my first tasks because we're going to have to dazz up a load of sandbags to do that. So it's converting time. First task, let's cut into this, get this roughly in shape and then start to put the, the, the polystyrene down for the bunkers. Once they're in, we can start shaping that and then we'll come back with the logs and stuff. So, see you shortly, guys. So I'm working on cutting out this foam, and I thought, you know what? It might be worthwhile just show you how I'm doing it. Now, actually, this stuff is really easy to cut, but you really want a retractable blade, yeah? Keep it nice and long, put it down, and what I'm doing is, if you notice, you've got to be careful, watch your eyes, but I'm giving a slight pressure to the blade so it just lies flat, 
And then underneath the bit that I cut, want to cut out, I'm just moving the blade. I'm not going deep. Yeah, I'm doing it in little sections. Yeah, once I've, I've sort of gone under, all I need to do is cut it like that. Sort of bring it down like that. And you can literally press straight down on this. And then, yeah, with like a metal tool or something like that, yeah, digging it out. Yeah, and as you can see, the chunks come away. So it's just a matter of me working around here like this, leveling off the foam, yeah, then putting a couple of nice clean cuts, yeah, and then pulling it out. Above all, yeah, do it in little bits. Don't try and get too far in, don't try and do big cuts, you don't need to. Yeah, because when you do that sort of stuff, there's a lot of blade out, there's a lot of pressure on it. Yeah, accidents happen. Little cuts, yeah, just like that. And you'll see that this one's coming in a difficult angle, so I'll come in this way. Yeah, and we'll just do a little cut there. Now just pull that one out. And we're gonna, yeah, and then I'm just gonna carry on round here and finish that off, yeah. So, my fire pit is expanding nicely. I'll bring it back once we're onto the bunkers. So that's the foam and the woodwork done. And if I show you, yeah, you can see I've used the foam inserts. We've got the watch it. We've got the standard log entrances. They've gone there. They're looking good. They've gone there. That's looking good. And I've got this sort of general, yeah, a rear facing one. I've slimmed this down. Yeah, just so we can get a mound over that rather than sandbags. And I've removed the top layer of sandbags, bringing this down a bit. So it's more the sandbags are more a rear facing sort of thing. The reason for that is because I'm only sort of jigging it with these sandbags on here. Yeah, where I've got to replace it. And that's the next job. Now, all I'm doing for that is I've got a bit of Daz. Yeah, I'm taking it out. I'm rolling it till it's about eight mil. I oh, know, about six. Yeah, then I'm pushing it down. I'm just coming along, cutting it into sandbags. Now for Daz mod, for Daz clay to actually stick down, yeah, it doesn't stick to dry surfaces that well. So what you need to do is just wet, wet the surface you're applying it to, like I did with the brush then. Yeah, and just come in, Stick your sandbags in. Now, like I say, I'm just doing this nice and simple. I'm gonna build the back of this up with putty or something. So I need to build an actual, the actual barricade there. Yeah, and obviously we've got some transition lines. I can put some logs in there like that. Now the log bunkers, obviously they've just been done exactly the same as we did with the watch it with the, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Yeesh, I forgot the term I'm looking for. Uh, with the trenches, so foam, bit of balsa wood cut into, uh, etched for the planking of the doors, and then just my simple logs glued and fixed into place. Turned out quite nice to be truthful. Yeah, so my next job, yeah, is just to carry on with this sandbagging, get these sandbags all on this edge. Yeah, so we can replicate, replace that. Yeah, and then once that's done, it'll just be to apply filler and just to smooth in all the areas. So I'm gonna bring it back once the sandbags are done and once we're applying the filler. I'll see you shortly, guys. That was actually quite enjoyable. So, sandbags are done. Yeah, and as you can see, yeah, they're okay. Now, obviously, use a little wooden stakes, a little bit of PVA, just break them up. It just makes it look a little bit easier and. It's a little bit easier to disguise the higgledy piggledyness of my sandbags. Now, next thing I've got to do is basically just blend it all together with some filler. Now, these aren't quite dry yet, but they're dry enough for what we need to do. I've filled a gap over here very quickly. Yeah, with just a bit of foam, just so we don't have to put too much filler in there so it'll dry relatively quickly. Yeah, and so the next job I've got to do is take my standard dial filler Smooth it on all the join lines, then a little bit of water on my hand, just smooth it out, just like I do with all my pieces. Yeah, and once that's done, leave it to dry, and hopefully we should come back with one uniform piece ready for painting. Well, that's the plan anyway. I'll see you in a sec.
So it's all filled up, it's all dry pretty much. And as you can see, it looks more like a mountain snow top. I kind of quite like it than a jungle base. So this is definitely going to need two coats of, of our brown, but it's come together lo lovely. Yeah, they've all blended nice. Yeah, you can see my little gun slits there. Yeah, my ammo store. Now I've beveled that down. It doesn't look so pronounced. And I've got this feeling like it is a defensive structure with these raised up. Secondly, with the height of them, I'm going to have no problems with them looking over my trenches. Yeah, because these are the same level of the trenches. The fire slits are above them. Yeah, and this is also mounted on 10 mil foam. So I'm going to have light defense in depth, which is kind of really cool. Unless you're the one who's actually going up against it, of course. Why do I do these things to myself? I have no idea. Anyway, my next job with this is we need to get it painted up. Now, to get it painted up, we're going to go for just our standard colours tight into the set. So, we've got a bit of Burma Brown. Yeah, we'll use our dark brown for all the woodwork like the rest of the pieces. And then for the sandbags, which is kind of new, I'm going to throw a little bit of okra, yeah, into my Burma Brown just to sort of line it up and give it a more natural look. This is a great earth tone. It's a great sort of lighter. Yeah, when you're working with earth sort of colours, stuff like this. So we'll whack some of that in it. So my next job is let's get this painted up. Then on top of that, we're going to add our watch colour, our Burma mix, which means, you know, our mixed herbs and that sort of stuff, get it stained. And then I'll come back when it's time to actually flock and add the foliage, because with a piece like that, a piece like this, that's the next important stage to get done. OK, so let's get stuck in. So our herb mix is all dried, it's painted up, it's looking good. Now, the only thing I haven't done is the sandbags. And there's a specific reason for this. It's the first time sandbags have appeared on the Burma build and rather than rush in and commit to how to do them, I'm just gonna leave them with a base coat, figure it out, have a play and that sort of stuff, work on a few test pieces, get a colour I like and then come back to it. I'd rather not commit to a certain style just yet and I don't want to come back and repaint it. So while I'm unsure on that, it's only a little bit and I can touch it up, you know, at any point. So I'm leaving the sandbags as they are, but the rest we need to get cracked on with. Now, if I bring it up, you can see all the bunkers have embedded in nicely. Yeah, our groundwork's done. Yeah, it's turned out really nice and it's a really nice feature piece. Yeah, but what we want is that sort of hillock look. And to create that, what I want to do is I want to sort of put together, add on my plastic plants. Now, much like with the other Burma builds, that sort of stuff, we're going to be using this stuff. And generally, I'm not going to be putting any trees on it. Yeah, I'll put a couple of small ones. Yeah, but I don't want anything too high because that's going to make it difficult to store. But I am going to use these. Now, the trick when you're using stuff with height on is if you put it right at the top, then obviously, you know, storage becomes an issue. If you drop it further down the bank, then that works. And, you know, it's got a lower profile, but it still has that deep jungle look. Now, I'm not just going to put them iggledy piggledy. When I herbed this up, what I did is I was specific that any flat areas I made sure were actually herbs. OK, and then any sort of really difficult areas to place models, I left bare. The reason I did this was quite simple. By doing this, what happens is I place my clumps here and then all that remains is areas that are good to place models. So although it's going to be a jungly piece, it'll still allow movement around these areas, yeah? Obviously, I put my herbs in front of these sort of places and that sort of stuff to get the ground look. But generally, this area, this area, this area, it's all going to be placeable. So I need to build my jungle clumps around here, whilst at the same time making sure I don't block off a bunker, yeah? So with that in mind, I'm just going to crack on in the same style that we've done all the Japanese defences, yeah, with plastic plants, then my ground cover, then clump and that sort of stuff. So I'll bring it back when it's done, guys.
Now that took way longer than I thought it was going to take, to be perfectly honest. This is actually quite a big piece, but it's turned out great. Check it out. Yeah. Now, as you, as you can see, just like the other pieces, yeah, I've taken it to 90%. Why am I spinning it around like that? Yeah, I've taken it to 90%. And I've still got a little bit of detailing to come back in here. Now the pieces are set. I just want to settle and get a feel for it and just make a couple of little notes of what I want to do. Yeah. yeah I often see odd little things like we could do with some lichen in there. Fill that gap in there now. A little bit down there. Maybe lighten these paths a little. Yeah. See, I get all these sort of ideas when I actually sit down and, and look at it afterwards. That's why they say a terrain piece is never truly finished. You can always come back and do something to it. It's knowing where to draw the line. And my process is 90%, build it, get it pretty much all done. And, and then once it's settled, come in, do that last 10% and call it a line. Yeah, so we're going to be coming back with another video, probably not next week, but the week after. Yeah, and that video is going to be covering leveling up the entire set and the build overview. So all the little bits I've got to do on the entire set that we've covered this month. So the barriers, the bunkers, the trench lines and this. Yeah, and then we're going to get it out on the table and get it all looking great. But that's it. That's how you can take sort of a hard foam piece. Yeah, and really, really ramp it up. And it works great. I mean, quite often when you're building a set, you know, you can look for hard foam pieces or any manufactured scenery piece that you can butcher, you can you can utilize, you can take the details from, yeah, and make it your own as like a feature piece, just like I did with this. Now, just to review down, all we really did, yeah, was extend the, the bunker, yeah, the actual extend the fire pit with some Daz Watch cutting the foam out and putting in some Daz Watch clip uh, sandbags. Then we just simply did our log bunkering technique. Yeah, to change what we had was the sort of walkaway paths, the the trenches. I'm all over the place today. We covered over the trenches, turned them into bunkers to basically give us an all-round defence, and then we heavily foliaged it, giving us some paths and some fire positions up here and some places where models can move to to assault. Yeah, so it's not just a defensive thing. If the player gets past the actual firing lines, there's places for them to place their models right next to the actual artillery. Yeah, on top of that, there's places for snipers and fire teams and stuff like that to defend the artillery on the actual mound. Yeah, and when you think of it combined with trench lines, hidden bunkers, log barricades, it's going to make a hell of a game. I'm really looking forward to it. So that's where we are with this. This has been a great foam. Yeah, foam thing, foam thing. It's been a great video. It's been a great project to get my mojo back and these foam watch clip pieces from Zidides are really good. I'll make sure there's a link in the description to them. No doubt I'll probably come across a few more of those in the future. Yeah, because I do like them and their convertibility is great. It certainly doesn't look like anything they sent me, that's for sure. But then again, neither did the trenches. Well, the trenches did a little. But this doesn't. I'm quite proud of this. Right, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed seeing me back on your screen and sharing these techniques and that sort of stuff, then I could appreciate that your support. There's the links down below and there's links on screen. Yeah, obviously, if you like the, the content, like it. If you've got anything to say, let me know down below. But if you do enjoy the content, that you know, jump on Patreon or jump on PayPal, whichever one of the links down below, it all helps. Yeah, keep me in the cat. <sighs> I really am. It all helps keep me in here basically doing this malarkey for you guys with a big smile on my face, putting a big smile on your face. So if that ain't worth a dollar a month, what is? Yeah, jump on Patreon if you can. And in the meantime, yeah, I've got to start the detailing, which means sitting back and being very critical about all my terrain. I am. This shouldn't be the hard part. Right, in the meantime, guys, all the best, yeah? Ta-da.